and so forth. Huh, user games. Didn't even know didn't even know that one existed. So what the, the pebble guide here is saying it comes back. Seems like uh, that page might not be uh, agreeing with Firefox too well. There we go. Is that you can actually um, add to this uh, file dot profile on your uh, in your uh, home directory on Linux. The little tilde here is just a shortcut for uh, slash user uh, slash whatever your username is. Um, for instance, on this machine, it's an it is slash home slash axlon. Um, if you add this line that basically will add the directory we just made to the path, it'll make it so when you try to use these pebble tools, you don't have to specify the path that they're stored in. You can just call them like CD and they just work. Um, for now, I can just uh, copy these commands. This command just appends that to the end of your uh, dash profile. All right. And typing a source profile um, just sort of uh, runs it runs that uh, file and loads the uh, the new environmental variable in so now if I were to uh, type pebble and try to autocomplete I could see that I have uh, huh I don't actually have that much in there right now oh I guess pebble is just the uh, the executable with all the other commands built into it interesting all right so I've installed the I've downloaded this but now I have to probably uh, install a bunch of uh, tools yeah that's why uh, running pebble didn't work was because I was missing a bunch of these dependencies so you can see why you might want to go down the uh, cloud um, development path where it basically just offers you a lot of this to the web um, and uh, you don't have to get your system initially set up. I tend to still uh, like doing the development on an actual system just because it's a little more flexible and especially if you're dealing with big files or other uh, tools that you want to integrate with um, just a little bit easier. So since uh, it's no uh, skin off my neck trying to figure this out just because this is all pretty uh, pretty well documented here I will uh, finish going through this process. Biggest pain in the butt is clearly the fact that there are all these very large uh, tools. Um, this right here is a cross compiler. It's basically the um, uh, a similar thing to what GCC or another uh, C or uh, other language compiler is, but instead of trying to build the program to run on your computer, it builds the program to run on the Pebble. Um, one thing that you find out uh, very quickly when you start trying to do development for phones or other uh, sort of special devices like the uh, smartwatch is that they tend not to use uh, x86 processors. So the x86 processor is the Intel chip that, or um, AMD or other maker that, that sort of have dominated the uh, laptop and uh, PC market. That's why you can just download a Windows program and just run it on any computer and you don't have to worry about uh, recompiling it. Uh, but uh, for the ARM on your, that's probably on your phone or on your uh, Pebble, you have to have this special compiler that'll make a executable that you can't actually run uh, normally on your uh, local machine, but will be compatible with the processor on the uh, watch. So while that's going, um, I'm going to uh, download and install Python on this machine. This machine hasn't, uh, it's, it's fresh, so there's no tools uh, besides the built-in ones. All right, there we go. So the first time you get this up and running, you can see that there's a lot of downloading involved. Um, Fortunately, most of this stuff, if you do a lot of development, will get used for other projects. 
but uh, this is sort of why it's nice to sometimes have a fresh machine. It's just if you have any old versions of these tools, none of them will conflict with uh, what you're uh, trying to set up now. So let's see, did the uh, other download thing? Nope, still going. That is a slow one. So basically, uh, I've read through this, so I have. Um, I don't feel the need to spend too much time going through each line of uh, text here. But uh, as you can see, you can basically just copy and paste all these commands and uh, get yourself up and running without too much uh, hassle. Um, if you do have a problem and you're not using a fresh install, well, it's possible that you're going to run into uh, an issue with some previous software you have set up. But uh, if you're setting this up fresh, um, should pretty much be good. Um, let's see. Okay, so that finished downloading. It's now installing. Pretty soon I can uh, just go through this stuff. Alright. So, um, when trying to decide whether to keep to, to run these updates, um, typically, I uh, if I'm in the middle of development, I hold off on some of this. I mean, obviously, the security uh, patches and whatnot are important, and uh, sometimes tools have real bugs in them to get fixed. But if you're in the middle of trying to set something up, uh, switching even uh, some innocuous uh, other uh, tools might end up uh, causing some unforeseen uh, conflicts. So. Always nice to. Oh, there we are. Oh, so I got a permission denied here. Apparently, I need to uh, run run these commands with sudo. So, cd worked. Let's see. Let's see. just try stepping back through these one by one. Okay. Oh, I see, I see. So, it installed the Python tools, but uh, it looks like when I tried to paste both lines in at once, it only ran the first one. Okay. So now let's try that again. As you can see, uh, I have plenty of things to uh, learn myself. Um, if you're doing a certain sort of uh, work very, very frequently, if you if you were doing this sort of thing every day, you would sort of have this down to a science. But uh, since this is the first time I've tried uh, to do any serious development here on the uh, Pebble, and I pretty rarely actually do uh, development straight on uh, Linux, I'm going to be making lots of little uh, mistakes with just how even the mechanics of uh, copy and paste work. All right, so that got us all set up. So uh, yeah, now I can go and uh, build one of the uh, Pebble app, app examples. So uh, I'm going to skip. Uh, the new project for the moment and go straight to one of the samples. So uh, this looks good. I'm going to build one of the watch faces. All right. Make this a little bigger so it doesn't get cut off. So remember when we added uh, Pebble to the path? Now sending it with the argument build should actually run correctly. Oh. Ah, right. <laughs> I had forgotten I was still downloading that. So, let's see. So this finished downloading. Let me go back to that step. Okay. So I got to go back up a directory and 
uh, extract this uh, cross compiler. All right, so that was easy enough. Okay, so let's try that again. There we go, much better. So, now that that's been done, let's see how we actually get that up and running. So I currently have my uh, phone connected to my uh, Wi-Fi network in my home, and my uh, watch is connected to my phone. So I it, am looking at my the Pebble app on my phone. I hit menu, and that gets me to the uh, that little uh, side menu. Going into developer, I can uh, I've already uh, turned on the uh, developer options. So I've enabled the developer connection. And I can see that my under under developer, I can see my phone's IP address, that it's enabled, and that the connection manager is connected. All right, so now let's try to actually send this over. All right. So my uh, watch vibrated, and I can see the uh, watch face up and running. So, perfect. Super easy. Once you've gotten this all installed, uh, developing new applications is pretty straightforward. You can, uh, you basically can uh, get started here, either going through the examples or uh, going back and actually doing their uh, their introduction their hello world uh, uh, tutorial um, so I'm gonna spend now spend a little bit of time setting up my development environment to be a little more suitable so I'm going to uh, go and uh, wait for this uh, download to finish which looks like it did and and uh, I'll just restart into that environment and I'll set up my uh, text editor just to uh, make the uh, see editing a little prettier.